Hi. So we had a technical difficulty. The first ten, five, ten minutes of our video got technically deleted because there was a technical glitch. Um, so I'm going to just recap really briefly for the video, and you can help me. What are we working on today? Bibliography. Um. <laughs> no blur. Go ahead. Um. Biblio. I can't pronounce it. Everybody. Sometimes it's called citations. C I T A T I O N S. Okay. And why did we say that was important? Sixty-five. Uh, so you could tell the people who are reading the magazine where you got your information. And just in case you need the information again, you can go back and look at the information. Yes. If you have to return it, if you have to go back and check on it. And what was the other reason for? So that the readers um, can know where you got your information. So they can evaluate the reliability and authority of your information to make sure it's from a credible source. Credible source is the other. So on your in your packets on page 16, 17, and 18, we're starting at page 16. You're looking at it. This is one form to use. We talked about that you put the authors in bibliography world, you put the author's last name first, comma, then the first name and middle name or middle initial. The title comes from the title page. We're now looking at City of Publishing and my friend in the front, where is that? Um, City of Publishing is Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis is the city. You don't have to, how do I spell Minneapolis? Okay. Spelling a word wrong when it's right in front of you? No good, because you could just copy. Yes, six. What if you just looked at the computer information and you didn't take book information? We're working on book information now. As we go through, you'll, we'll come to those resources. Okay. So, publishing company. Can you find the publishing company, my sir? Look on the back of the title page. That's the title page. So, on, so this would have Publishing Runner's Publication Company. And that's right on the title page. Sometimes you have to go to the back of the title page to find it. So this would have to be on the front. And this learner is spelled like somebody's last name, not like about the... And you can abbreviate company with C O period. Copyright date. Copyright date. Find the copyright date in the text, please. Back of the title page. Okay. Let me come over. Title page. Where's the title page? There's the title page. And we're going to look on the back of it. And so you have to use your eyes and scan. And I look for dates. And I go to text copyright. What's it say? Yeah, it's a year. It's not. Sometimes there'll be a month or a date, especially if you're uh, if it's from an article. But for a book, it's usually just um, a, a year. Copyright might have the word copyright written out. It might have a symbol like that. And that means somebody's claiming it as their work. So you can use this form in your book, in your packet, to, re to actually record your resources on. There are, and if you use more than, I think I have three book book sources on there? Three or four on page 16. Four. Uh, four. four. Okay. So you have, yeah, because I kind of squished the last one in to get it in there. So on page 17 is that question that my friend 65 had was about internet sources. So it first asks, so somebody give me a topic. Yeah. Uh, running. 
Running? Yeah. Okay. And a question to answer for running. Um, who was the first African American The first African American Olympic running. Okay, so I put that in Google, and I'm going here, and, oh, okay, so, um, just biography.com, I know is a pretty good um, research, so I'm going to, uh, credible source, so I'm going to go to that one. Their job is to do biographies of people. So here's Jesse Owens. Oh, there's lots of good information. He won four medals at the 1936 Berlin record, Olympic Games. His record, long jump record, stood for 25 years. Lots of good information. But who wrote it? There, where do I find the author? So I'm going to scoot all the way down. Oh, let's see. Meet the editors. That might be a place to find who was who did that or here it has look at this they already have the citation form so all the information is here now it says APA style Harvard style MLA style what the heck is that well each academic discipline and living in a university um, town many of you write papers hi who do you need Riley Okay, can you pass that to the person, to somebody who has done it? Okay. And so, um, and you guys can check the video later. Okay. So, MLA, APA, um, Harvard style are all, each academic discipline kind of goes, oh, my way of recording which way to do it is the best. You have to do it my way. Put, put it my format. It's kind of like... If you went to play uh, Monopoly at my house, our rules are that you put 500 in the middle, and if you land on free parking, you get that. Those aren't the rules in the book. And if you went to play that game at my son's house, he plays only by the rules in the book. So um, so it's, it's kind of like that, that people have different rules, different departments. Science has a different way of recording, and psychology has a different way. So, I'm not asking for it in a particular style. So what you might want to do for this one is to go down to say, to hear where it says, meet the editors. So I would click on that. And they did a lot of information about the editors. They have one, two, three, three editors. So I would choose the first one because I don't know which one um, but for my internet piece, I'm going to go back to that page. Laura Grimm is her name. Okay. So I would go, the author was last name first. Laura. And then I would put another comma and I put ED for what? Editor. Editor. Okay, the title of the article and the site. What's the title of the article? Who was our topic? Jesse Owens and the site was Wikipedia. No, it was not Wikipedia. It was a uh, history. Bio, bio. And then, so bio. If I can't find the title of the article, it, or if, it, if like it, it was it, the title of the, title of the site, um, was National Geographic. So I'm going to put biography. The copyright date of the article. Now for that, I'm going to go back to where it says site. Okay, so what year is here in parentheses? 2015. Thank you for the person who was up close. So now I'm going to go back to this page and write the date of the article is 2015. It might have, if there was more information that it was January 1st, 2015, then I put up, was July 4th, 
1976, that's what I would write down. Summer specific. Date you accessed the site. Date I looked at it to get the information. The first date that I looked at it. What was that? Do 1215. Do 1215. And then I would copy the address here. Yes. Would you put all these questions, like you would put like authors slash editors and then put a line in your magazine and then put? What we're going to do is, yes, there will be a site for, for credits. And I'll show you how that's going to work too. Credits is the bibliography. So right. what is it? I'll show you. So that would be for, and so the address would be um, bio.com slash jesse. I think it was underlined Owens. You would copy that there. You can do this, all of this recording of your citations on these sheets. And one way to organize that, we'll talk about that after break, is um, so you know which information you got from which source. There's a way to code it and organize it. Yes, sir. Um, this doesn't really relate to the internet, but it relates to the books. Um, what if it's your own book? Do you still have to do this? It's a book that you wrote? No, like, that you, like, I mean, like, that you've got, like, it's yes, you Yes, if you it. went and got this tick book from the library because you were doing ticks. I mean, like, you own it. Yes, whether it's from the library, you own it. Any resource you use. It could be a photograph that you're using or a movie that you look at. So you might see a video that you look at, too, that you have to then write the information down. There's also encyclopedia sources, which have basically the same kind of information, and an interview. So if you talk to somebody, if Mr. Kreutz decides to change his thing and not do lacrosse and does disc golf, he could do it on interview Mr. Mason, and he would put this information in there. Is that making any sense at all? Yeah. Now, fortunately for the world, and for us, uh, my friend, can you erase my, the board here? Google Drive, which is what we use, has another tool that you can use that is very cool. Let me see if I found it. On my video. Now that the understanding of primary and secondary resources. Hmm. Oh, this might be it. Google Docs. Okay. I know that Mrs. Smart has showed you the research tool, correct? There's also a tool called Easy Bib that we can add on. So it's not on there. Earl Ford. And it's called that because he was our greatest athlete. He fought for so much and he inspired so many people. So when you receive that award as an athlete, it makes you feel like oh, you become the somebody important. Not just the always, but. Okay, that's the Jesse Jackson one. Now I've got to escape this full screen. So back here, get rid of Jesse because we don't need this video right now. Yeah. That one's for later. That one I want to watch. And so now we're going to watch this one. So now we should be all set and now we have competing sounds. The lights. Can you get the lights, please, friends? Me too. Yep. Today, Google just came out with a great new feature that's going to be really helpful for students and teachers and basically anyone using Google Docs. It's called add ons. And you'll notice that it's up in the menu bar of your documents, your spreadsheets, and other um, Google apps. And there's lots of different choices, but today I'm going to show you one that helps with research. Now, in the past, you may have used the Google Research tab. So if you go to Tools and go to Research, on the right-hand side, there is the Research tool. And here, you can search for anything in Google. Images, 
Google Scholar, which is probably the best if you want to find credible resources. There's some great documents here. You can use quotes, dictionary, as well as tables. So what you would do is just type in your Google search of the topic you're looking for, and it will pop up with a bunch of different things. So here are some PDFs, the first three here. If I scroll down, it has some web results. Um, then there's also images and lots of things below, but again, I can search for that separately um, by changing this to images or whatever to filter my results. Now, let's say I am interested in this first one, the Wikipedia article. If I click on this link, it would open up the article in a new tab in my browser, but I could also preview it by clicking preview. Now, let's say I've read this and I've put it in my own words, I've come up with an argument or a claim that I want to use or some evidence. Then I could insert the link into my document. And so I could be talking about it and use that link right there. Now, let's say that I want to cite it in my source. So I want to have a footnote, and I will, I'm going to click cite, and I'll put the little footnote next to my um, sentence. So if I'm putting a quote in or something like that, I can cite it. So that's what that little one is. And if I go down to the bottom of the screen, it's cited for me properly as a um, footnote. But maybe you need to do an assignment and you need to use APA in your science class or in your English class, maybe you're using MLA. Right at the top of the page, there's this arrow right here. If I click down on it, I can change the citation to MLA, APA, or Chicago. I can also filter by license to see whether it's something I can use or share. I want to put an image in my document, I can make sure it's one that has been set that anyone can use that image. Now this research tool is an amazing resource for you, but it doesn't put things in an actual bibliography. So I'm going to show you a new tool in the add-ons. So add-ons, if you click up at the top, it says you can do more with docs. And then you're going to want to choose Get Add-ons. It's going to give you a bunch of different lists that this has been opened to um, lots of different companies. The API is open to everyone. So maybe you want to create labels. Avery now allows you to create mail merge labels. But the one that we're going to choose today is EasyBib. So you're going to scroll down and look for EasyBib, which I think I've passed. Oh, there it is, right here, this big orange one. EasyBib is going to allow us to create a bibliography. So I'm going to click on the plus, and it's free for me to download. And it came up with a request for permission. You're going to want to accept that. And then this will be added in your add-ons. So now it says that we can search for it here, and we can click learn more, but I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to show you how to use it. So to access EasyBib whenever I want, I'll go to add-ons, and this will be in every document that I go into. So I'm going to choose Easy Bib, Bibliography Creator, and I'm going to manage my bibliography. It's going to open up my bibliography information on the right-hand side of the page. And right now, I don't have any sources chosen yet, but I can put in the title of the book by typing in the title, the ISBN or keywords, and search for it. I can type the same sorts of things in for a journal article, or I can also put in a website. So if you're doing research for genetically modified organisms, maybe you're using this article from Newsla about a Florida mom sewing pepperidge farm over natural and its goldfish labels. And so it's um, looking at GMO foods. So if I read this article and I'm talking about it in my paper, I can copy by pressing Control C on the um, highlighted web URL. And then an easy bit for the website, I'm going to paste in that website and press search. And it should find it. And then I just double check by looking here, and this is the same article, so I'm going to select it to add it to my bibliography. So here it's added in my um, bibliography, but it's not yet in my document. Let's say I go and I search and I find another article about GMOs helping to end world hunger and I use this as a reference. I can copy this URL and it's a website so I'm going to paste it here. Search 
and this was my document that I used, so I'm going to press select. And now those are both in my bibliography. Now let's pretend that I'm done with my essay or my report. Now I want to add the bibliography to my doc. And I can choose again MLA, APA, or Chicago. Since this is for science, I'm going to choose APA. I'm going to set a change to the bibliography. You can kind of preview it by clicking on the different ones. And now to add it to my document, I'm going to choose Add Bibliography to my doc. And I'm going to set it put it in the correct format. So it started with the bibliography on the left, and then it indented the second line for each of my bibliography references. So this is a wonderful tool that you should use and it will make your life so much easier when creating your bibliographies for your research projects. So that um, will be, video will be available for you to watch later and there are other ones that explain it too. And actually if you um, join the Geek Squad at the high school. That's what it's called. The Geek Squad, there, that's kids who help with technology. You can make videos like that to help other people understand what's going on. Um, so that is one way to do that. As we go forward with bibliographies and with our research, um, I'll be talking about some other things that you can do. But if you do any research over vacation, write down this information. You can use the inf it in this packet, or you can write down the information, the same information on an index card. Or you can start a Google Doc about it. Yes? Um, can you like write down the notes that you find on paper? Yes. Right. The first day we come back after vacation, I'm going to do a lesson on note taking because there's some different ways to do notes. You'll have to choose what's best for you because you're a learner that's different from me. And my way of taking notes may be different than your way of taking notes. But we're going to talk about that and give you some choices. Um, and then we will, um, and if you've already started, that's okay. You might change your note system, taking system. You might keep the one you have chosen. Yes? Should we download EasyBib onto our Google Docs? If you think you're going to want to use it, yes. I didn't get that. I don't know how they got that. Okay. So one option you have is to go over vacation onto um, the Porta Portal. And on the class Porta Portal, the fifth grade Porta Portal, I've added a new um, category. It's the second one, and it says fifth grade media. And the very first one is the project formerly known as the fifth grade history fair, because I don't have a new name on it. And it also has all our pictures from the year. So the fifth grade history fair project, if I click on that, goes to the, when it connects, it goes to oh, it goes to the playlist of my school YouTube channel, and then you can go and say which lesson do I want. This one lesson will be called bibliographies, um, and you'll watch that and you'll see that video again, so you can follow along with it. Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? Okay, if I have not signed or initial dated. Your paper on page three, down to how to create a video, le uh, a bibliography lesson. Please op uh, get your packet open so I can come do that. You can turn off the filming. No, because we have 